Hey everybody, it's so cool that we're here. I can't believe there are seven of us here already and we've got some likes um, for this live stream. I am definitely here mostly just to hang out with you guys and to talk about face painting critiquing, which I know is all of our favorite things, but feel free to use the chat uh, bar. I will be monitoring that as we go along. And this is gonna be so much fun. We get to spend an hour together today, which is not going to be enough, but I'm sure it's also like way too much. I appreciate all of your time that you guys are here. There are uh, 10 of us so far, which is awesome. Um, if you miss anything, hello, Melissa. If you miss anything as we go through this and you have questions or you're like, oh, what did she say? Or I missed that. Definitely say something, speak up. And I am happy to go slower um, or to repeat myself or to show something again. Um, so welcome absolutely to critiquing as a face painter. So there's a few different reasons I wanted to talk about this today. Being critiqued is really hard. I know how much we all love when we go and we're doing face painting. Hello, Adriana. Uh, I, kn I know that feeling of wanting people to like our work, of hoping that everybody loves it, that people are excited because we're excited and hearing things like, that's so beautiful. Oh, I love it. Oh, isn't she cute? That's wonderful. And there has never been a more positive environment than a face painting environment. When we are working on the job, there is just glow. Even if you're brand new to face painting, I guarantee you know what I'm talking about. The kids are excited. Parents are excited. Something new and unique is happening and it's awesome. And so yay for that. However, there are times on the job when somebody says, oh, that was an interesting choice or <laughs> you know, those things. And all of a sudden there's like this, oh, Ah, and we hate it. It feels really bad. It feels really uncomfortable. I know whether, you know, and sometimes compliments can be uncomfortable. It's not just uh, the, the critiques that are bad, but somebody might be like, oh, you're a lot better than X, Y, or Z or whatever. And it's just like, ah. so we want to talk about the awkwardness. We want to be able to take away some of the awkwardness and to be able to just understand what it is we're doing, okay? So what is it that we are doing as we are face painting? When we're there and we're putting out work, art is subjective. There is no art that is good and there is no art that is bad. Good and bad, right and wrong, those words don't, uh, they don't belong in art. And one of my favorite examples of this is when you take little kid art and you're looking at a two-year-old or three-year-old and now it's usually parents, grandparents, you know, an aunt, That'd be me. Um, that's like, oh, look at that art. It's amazing. And it touches us. Now, how can a two-year-old scribbling with a pen held upside down, <laughs> how can that touch us? It's because it is a genuine expression of something. And little kids, they can't express in any way besides a genuine. And so it's so easy for them to genuinely express. Now, I'll tell you a secret. Face painters get to genuinely express from a kid's expression. So we're co-creators. There are very few face painters that go out there and they do it all on their own. Like usually we're talking to a kid and we're like, oh, hey, what do you want on your face? What are your favorite colors? And we take this prompt and then we create something magical. And so as we look at those creations, part of the magic that's there doesn't belong to us. Are we the ones choosing the brushes? Yes. Are we choosing the paint? Yes. Are we choosing the sparkles? Yes. Are we using our hard earned skills? Yes. However, there have been times people have asked me for things that I'm like, oh, that's not a good idea. <laughs> and the fact that I feel that way means I'm probably going to be incapable of doing a good job. Almost every single time when I've had that, oh, this is not a good idea, it has turned out to not be a good idea. Um, anyway, so what are good ideas? Well, they are when we connect and the kid connects and we create something magical. So critiquing, what's its place? Its place is to amp up the magic. How can we make something awesome more awesome, right? How can we take our skill and improve our skill level? How can we take what the kid is giving us and dig just a little bit deeper? So a kid says their favorite color is pink. And you're like, oh, that's awesome. I love pink too. Do you like light pink or do you like bright pink? You know, or whatever. Dig a little deeper. If they love dogs, do you have a dog at home? What's her name? And then all of a sudden we can hide the name of the dog on the kid's face and we can do all of these really special things. 
So it is okay to critique. It feels uncomfortable and I am horrible at being edited. So critiquing an art isn't as hard for me, but when I write something, like if I write a blog post or if I write something, I can hand it off to an editor and be like, edit it and then give it back. And that's fine. But like to sit and to listen to somebody tell me how I should have done something different. That's awful. So I'm not telling you to open your heart to other people critiquing you, but I want to show you how to use the power of critiquing in your own work to open up and to enlighten yourself and to be able to go through things. So I'm going to go through some of my own work here with you, and I'm going to show you how I self-critique. Now, the way that we can do this that can be so powerful is by doing this together, well, <laughs> with your work or with the work of somebody else. So as we're going out and we're trying to figure out, oh my gosh, what do I want to learn from other people? If you take your, your critical mind instead of just going and collecting. So for example, if we go out into the forest and we're like, I want to collect some beautiful things. And so we go out and we start picking all of these beautiful things. And you're like, this is pretty, this is pretty, this is pretty. And then we're ignoring anything that isn't the best. We're going to miss all kinds of things that are really cool. They just might not be absolutely what we were hoping for. And so what we can do is we can take bits and pieces from people because face painting designs are amazing. There are so many, but if we just get the ones we absolutely love, then we'll be limited to what we absolutely love, right? It takes a lot for me to be like, I absolutely love that. And so what we can do is we can be like, Ooh, I really like this piece and I really like this piece and I really like this piece. And then we put those together in a design that I absolutely love. And not only do I absolutely love it, but I've never seen this before. And adding to the industry, seeing somebody else paint something that you kind of came up with is really exciting and it's really fun and it's really powerful. And like, okay, so happy, happy, excited, excited, but it's also meaningful and touching to be able to paint something and look at it and be like, I kind of created there a little bit. I wasn't just copying, I actually created. Okay, so we're gonna go into the chat now um, and we've got some of us here. What design would you guys like to see first? Do you wanna see a unicorn? Do you wanna see a tiger? Do you wanna see a butterfly? I have my um, years of paintings all set up here for us um, and we're going to pull one up and critique. So, oh, butterfly, you know, that's awesome. Um, because that's actually what I pulled up too. But we'll do more than one. So we'll definitely have turns. Okay, so I'm going to pull a butterfly here for us that um, I definitely think we can critique. Okay, and I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so we can all see it really good. Okay, here we go. So here is this beautiful butterfly. Now, before anybody says, oh, it's perfect, there's not, no. Nothing is perfect, okay? So don't feel like we have to do something that's perfect, okay? Because this isn't subjective. I'm not saying this is a good butterfly. I'm not saying it's a bad butterfly. I'm saying that I want to get better. And if you're not in a place, ooh, look, there's the beautiful sun for us. <laughs> if you're not at a place where you want to get better, well, that's great. Okay, you can, you can be there. But I know for me, I want to get better for sure. I always do. And so what can I learn by looking at this picture and to be like, okay, I could do this better. So here we go. I'm going to fill in some critique. First of all, this is done with a one stroke. So whenever we design or we organize something, we want to take the time to be like, okay, how are we going about this? And there are a bunch of different things that I always think about. So the first thing I always think about is color. And that's the first question we ask. Oh, hi, you're getting your face painted. What's your favorite color? You know, we always want to talk about color. We always want to talk about mood, okay, or emotion. What is it we're trying to capture? And this might not be something you think about a lot, but it's definitely there. So if it's a cute little girl, it's going to be a completely different mood than if it's a 12 year old boy. If it's a 12 year old boy, I guarantee we're gonna go for a different mood than if we are designing something for a 15 year old girl. And so as we decide, okay, what mood am I going for? What color am I using? We also wanna look at shape. So there are a few different things that we'll touch on. Okay, so here we look at color. You can see that this butterfly was done with a base. I'm trying to like angle it so that 
um, the color shows through. Sorry, I would have loved to have printed it out, but this is great. Okay, so this is a one stroke base. It's done with purple, blue, and white. Now, while purple, blue, and white is a wonderful combination, and there's nothing about that that I would critique at all, except that in this application, the blue and the white ends up kind of swallowing this butterfly. Can you see how there isn't a lot of detail below her eyes or up on her eyelids because the white just kind of takes over. So one of the things that we could do different next time, that is what critiquing is, is what could we do different next time? What is it that we could shift or change that would make something awesome? So one of the things we could do different next time is we could actually use our one stroke to pull in more of a shape than just the outline. This was done with a one stroke outline and then the inside was just filled in with the inner color. Had it not been white, had it been maybe yellow or pink, this wouldn't be as striking, but because it's white and it's so close to her skin color, I feel like there's some loss in the butterfly color. Okay, another example is we could just use a sponge instead. If we love this white, blue, purple color, then we could just sponge on that base and we would be good to go. All right, next, let's take a look at the mood. Purple and blue are colors that create a very um, mystical mood. It's a very calm mood. It's kind of a cool color. These are kind of night colors, which are really fun. Um, hey, Rom, nice to have you here. I'm so glad you're here. Okay, so as we look at this, this is going to create a nice calm butterfly. And we can decide, is that what we like? Is that what we're going for? Oh, and I just realized I can turn down my brightness here. Maybe. Okay, let me see. And that should help us. Okay, let's see. Oh yeah, that's a lot better. Okay, so as we um, are going with the mood, we can look and say, did that mood fit this design? Do we want a calm butterfly or do we want to have a little bit more something, something going on? So that's kind of a choice there that we have. And really, I really like blue and purple butterflies. I think they're beautiful, but I love there to be a little bit more than just blue and purple. When there's only blue and purple and black and white, I feel like it's a little bit cool for what I'm looking for. Okay, awesome. Uh, you're admiring the antlers. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, probably I would go with antenna, but that's so funny. Oh yeah, there you go. Um, I thought you were teasing me for how giant they are. And you're like, yeah, those antenna look like antlers. Okay, so let's take a look at the body next. The butterfly body is one of the most under... Well, yeah, I love you. Okay, one the butterfly body is one of the most underused parts of the butterfly, okay? We focus so much time on wings and getting the wings, and we'll get there, don't, don't worry. We've got plenty to talk about these wings. But we want to make sure that the butterfly body gets its due. So a butterfly body consists of a head and a body. And then we also have the antenna. I'm going to call them antlers now. Okay. So as we look at the head and body, often it's painted as one piece. You can see here, it's just a teardrop down. We can also do just a little dot. But in this design, is it working? You know, this design actually works kind of well because we have the swirls in the antenna and it's over on the wings as well. And so it's very simple and that can be okay. If I were to do it again, would I want to keep them exactly that way? Um, I feel like it would be better if that little tail on the body was just gone and it was just a head and antenna or if it were to be the head and then separate and then a little body or something. So that's just me. And again, there's no good, bad, right or wrong. This is just my feeling as I look at this, what do I like and what do I want to change next time? So we're looking for things to change next time. The antenna, when we're painting antenna, I love to do thin to thick to thin, whether it's a swirl, whether it's a straight line, or just a teardrop even works, but I love antenna that have attitude. That's what I just think of, let it ring, let it shine, let it say, hey, I am here and I matter, I'm not going anywhere. So that's why you can see they are so big and luscious and that's awesome. But what I don't love is I have this little bit of white and it's kind of hard for you guys to see, but there's a little white trailing of dots that has a heart and a sparkle and it goes from one side down to the other. And I often will do this trying to get some asymmetry, but this design is symmetrical. And so having a symmetrical design that then has one asymmetrical piece is like a rose bouquet that has one daisy. <laughs> 
you can mix daisies and roses. There is nobody that can say you can't do that. Absolutely. But if it's all roses and then there's a single daisy, it just looks a little odd. Um, and that's how I feel about that little sprig of magic. And so if you want to have that magic, what I would recommend is having it everywhere. Okay, so here I am telling you what to do. And what I should be saying is what I want to do next time. Because again, self-critiquing is all about the self. So what I want to do next time is I want to create my magic from right here and do a rainbow arch of magic right over there and leave the bottom alone or maybe add a little bit in the each corner of the eye so that it's all over. And I feel like that would be a little better. So those are some of the extras at the end. So I like to think of those as details. Okay, so we've gone over the color, the mood, the details. Let's take a look at the shape. Eyebrows are one of the most tricky things and they get in the way of almost, oh, hello, Tootsie Decor. They get in the way of almost every single design. Like it's super frustrating when you're there and you're trying to do something awesome and then what is it but Mr. Eyebrow? Like, you know, I always think, like, raise your eyebrows at it. Like, oh yeah, I've got eyebrows too. Get out of my way. <laughs> so when we are attacking rainbow, or not rainbow, but butterflies and eyebrows, what we want to take a look at, and I want to zoom in even further so we can take a look right there. Oh, this is as close as we can get. Okay. So what we want to take a look at is this bend. There is a bend in an eyebrow. It happens on everybody. It's the brow ridge. And you can see if you smash it down, we can get some of the puffiness to go away, but it's going to show up in our butterfly wings. And it definitely was showing up here, especially since my thick to thin line was right there at the apex of that eyebrow. So what we can do to um, change that and what I would do next time, what I usually do is I tuck a second little bit of a wing right there. And that helps my wing shape be the shape that is seen instead of the eyebrow shape of the face. Because we are looking to transform this little girl into a butterfly and a butterfly doesn't have eyebrows, at least not that we can see. And so what we want to do is see on the cheek right here, the underline, see how beautiful that line just floats. But then when we have this eyebrow line, this line goes and it goes uh, by the eyebrow and kind of humps over the eyebrow. And it almost points an arrow to like, oh, look right there. It's not a very good shape. So we can just shift the, the wing in a little bit to avoid that. Or we can add that second little wing. And I'll show you a picture of that second wing here in a second. The one other thing that I would say about the wing of this um, butterfly, I wish we had the side view so that we could go into it a little bit more, but I also want to talk about some other designs. So what I want to notice is we've got some really nice balance from the upper wing to the bottom wing, but they're the same. They're the same size. They're the same. You know, we have the little swirl on the bottom that makes it longer, but upper wings and bottom wings give us a chance to be different. And so I love for the top wing and the bottom wing to not be the same. And so these ones match a little too perfectly for me. So I would add a little bit more variation and I feel like that would be really awesome. So that is something that I would change. Another thing that I would change is you can see that the color underneath the eye, we've got a lot of skin showing through and that's okay. Especially if this little girl's eyes are sensitive. I don't want to mess with that, but details can go in and get there. I know with a big brush or with a big sponge, it's hard to be like, look up. And then you have this giant sponge that you're like shamming in their eye. We don't want to do that to anybody, but with these little, you know, white hearts or dots, we can fill in or teardrops or whatever. Some of that space um, or powder also works very well. But even if we're not going to get close to the eye, we want there to be a nice faded transition. And right here, you can see there is a line. And so next time, and again, I want you guys to do this. When you start feeling self-critical, I don't want you to chant to your head, I'm actually a good face painter. I'm actually really good. I'm actually better. Or, no, like absolutely. I want you to notice things about your work that you're like, next time I'm going to do it different because that is the mindset of growth. And we're not afraid to make mistakes or not even to make mistakes, but to not be our best. We, I hope you're never your best because your best is yet to come, right? We want to get better. We always want to get better, okay? And so don't be afraid to be like, hmm, next time and let there be a next time, okay? Don't feel like this is the pinnacle because this is, if this is the best face paint you're ever going to do, that's really sad because it means it's all downhill from here, okay? So, okay, um, I'm feeling really good about this butterfly. Now, this is huge, once you're finished with a design, you want to take a step back and you want to look at the human. Okay. So we've talked all about this butterfly, right? 
but let's talk a little bit about this cute little girl. Isn't she adorable? She's so cute. Okay, we want to look and see how did we do for her. Some of the things that we want to look at is, did we do eyeliner? Did we do lipstick? Did we do some blush? Have we done things to emphasize her beauty? One of the things I always do, <laughs> except for right now, obviously, because I keep swiping my bangs, um, is I almost always have a bobby pin in the bangs. Even if I'm doing a cute little cheek design, I want the face to show. I want to see the little kid. And so by twisting the bangs back and poking in a little bobby pin, then I get to see her face. And that is the most beautiful part of any face painting, I tell you. It doesn't matter how good the face painter is, the, the human is the most beautiful part. So we wanna see them. Okay, next, the eyes. You can see that her eyes um, are in kind of um, overset. You don't see a lot of her eyelid. So doing eyeliner here probably wouldn't do too much, but look at that cute little mouth that has no lipstick. It's such a sad travesty. <laughs> And I know painting on lips is a little intense, um, especially with COVID and all of that scary yuck. Um, but you can get lip applicators that you do one-time use or even Q-tips are fantastic for that. So we just throw a little bit of lipstick on there. And then once you've done the human check, that's what I call it. So you do a human check. It's like, okay, I've got my butterfly ready, but do the human check. And that can really help you feel special. It helps them feel special. We can add little jewels to the ears if we want to do some earrings or something. And that gives the kid a chance to be like, oh, she loved me because we are looking at them and they will notice themselves and their parents will notice them more than they will notice your art. So you, from somebody walking by, will be like, oh, look at your butterfly. But to them, they'll say, oh, look at you, Georgie, or whatever her name is. You know, um, I have no idea what her name is. So you want to take a second to do your human check. Okay, awesome. So now that we have so many critiques, okay, was that like, I want to show you guys a design that I'm really embarrassed about and I need your help to make it better. No, it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with growth, the growth mentality. And you guys can grow and I can grow. I want to get better. You better believe every time I paint a face, I have this little bit of me. Maybe think like 3%, okay? We are not giving our growth half. No, not at all. We're giving it this little bit and we're going to be like, we're going to let me have a little growth voice. And so if your growth voice is yelling at you and be like, oh my gosh, you can't even do a straight line or you can't even do a curved line or you can't, whatever line. Hate, hating on your line work is like all of us face painters. We do it. I know. Okay. So you can be like, you only get 3% of the vote here and make sure that you're paying attention to those kids and those parents and also glow for yourself. Be like, I love the way that that sponge just laid down that color. Maybe the rest of the design went south, but I did that really well. So in any design, every single one you have a picture of, of your own or any single one you see online or anywhere, every single design have things about it that were done really well and things about it that could have been done better and that can be done better next time. All right. Okay. Back to the chat. Hello, everybody. It's so good that you're all here. Okay. So, um, what do we want to do next? We did our butterfly. I'm going back to what we have looking at. We can go, I'll give you some examples. Um, of course, we can do tigers. We can do fairies. We can do flowers, princesses. We can do a boy one. What do you guys want to critique next? Dragons, unicorns. What are we doing? Ooh, a holiday design. Okay. I will go find us a good holiday design. Well, you guys all think about what other ones you want to do. Because now that we've got the rhythm, we might even be able to go a little faster. Maybe I can find holiday ones. Hold on. These are so organized that they're hard to find. <laughs> okay. You guys are being so patient. If somebody hops on right now, they're going to be like, this is the most boring live stream ever. Okay. So I have no idea why I don't have a holiday one up here, but we will definitely have tons of holiday things coming up soon. So it should be here, but I don't have a holiday folder. I'm so sorry. 
It's probably here. If I find it going through, we'll find something else. Okay. Oh, and we've got reindeer. I love reindeer and I've got really cute reindeer designs. Let me see if it's in um, my animal folder. We'll find a reindeer because that counts as a holiday design. Good idea. Okay, here we go. So we've got... All right, so this deer is from a while ago, which is going to be great because it will be even easier to critique. Okay, so here we go. Awesome, oh, Spider-Man dinosaur, Spider-Man. Okay, <laughs> I, it is so easy to critique my own Spider-Man because Spider-Man is actually like an Achilles heel. If um, you've ever worked with me before, uh, or if you talk to somebody who has worked with me, they'll be like, oh yeah, Lara doesn't paint Spider-Man. I totally do. Uh, but I will often be like, okay, you get all the Spider-Man today and I will take whatever else you don't wanna do. Uh, just because you can't change him too much before he's not Spider-Man anymore. And I just have a hard time doing the same thing. And so every single design, I'm always like, oh, what can I change? And Spider-Man doesn't look like Spider-Man if we change too much, but we still might take a look at Spider-Man. All right, so here is a cute little reindeer. Um, and you can see, I'm not teaching you how to do this reindeer. That is not what we're doing. We are here looking for what could I have done better next time? So this base was laid in with powder. So let's take a look at that first. Um, we have the color here right on the chin line that is brown and white and the outlining did not follow. So for this design, it's totally fine. But next time, if his little brother was getting the same thing, I would just make sure, you know what? I really like the white that's under the eye extending out a little past the eye. And so I love when I'm painting to paint with landmarks. And so you can see that we've got the white to the end of the eye, but my jaw went to back. And so next time, I'm gonna do that a little different. As we continue to look at the color, we can see that this is pretty bland. Um, yes, it's a deer, yeah, and we like a deer. And the difference between a deer and a reindeer, I'll tell you, uh, you just put something Christmassy on it. You know, the red nose for Rudolph or whatever. So if you throw a circle nose instead of um, a more deer shaped nose, that can make it into a reindeer. So that's really great too. Um, these little antlers, I feel like um, are very similar in color tone. So if you're gonna lay down a base in powder, it's really nice to use some bright white or some ivory cream, whatever you want for the antlers, because that will give them a different look. It will also give them a different texture. Antlers are hard, they're like fingernails or something. And so taking the time to use a different paint, obviously this face painting was done pretty quickly, um, can be really nice. So that's something else I would change about the color. As we look um, at the mood, uh, these designs are so fun. I love animation designs. Um, oh, and yes, adding Christmas lights, so fun. Um, absolutely. And play with the size of Christmas lights when you're adding lights. So you could add like a giant two lights or three lights and just have them really big. Or you could do tiny little lights that are all tangled up in the antlers, which would totally happen. Why isn't there a Christmas book about the... Um, angry reindeer union trying to get Christmas lights banned because they make um, their landing on roofs so dangerous. I think that'd be hilarious. But anyway, okay, back to what we're doing. Um, anyway, so as we take a look at the mood, um, we don't really have any indications of a mood here. Um, however, this kid acts is definitely going to um, change the mood of the design. But if we wanted to put in a mood, we could easily add other things into our story to create that mood. All right, so then we wanna take a look at the shape. We've done a really good job staying right around his eye. The nose is used really well. This bottom chin lip is just hitting onto the nostril. And so we wanna be really careful in that area, but pretty much everything's going okay until we get down here. This bottom part of the design is very thick and nothing's happening. <laughs> and so there's just this little like, huh, I wonder what's going on there. And so we could narrow that up to make it a little more sleek and elegant, um, or we could thicken it to make it look like a really strong deer. Um, but having it be just this very column shape isn't what I want to do next time. I want to do it a little different next time. Then we've got an ear here, 
And we've got this little fuzz on his hair. And I love giving critters little hairdos. I think it's really fun. But if you notice, the shape of the ear is almost exactly the same shape as that hair. And so it almost looks like there's this funky like double ear or something. I don't really like it. And you can see that this is right into his eyebrows. So talking about eyebrows again, um, we might want to angle it down a little bit or something so that we can avoid that spot. But I really like how the eyebrows just peeking through and it gives our deer an eyebrow. I think that that's super fun. So we also have some hair back here. Reindeer and deer don't have a mane like a horse. And so I, this is a good time to take the time to look at a real animal and to be like, okay, dear, what do you actually look like? And see, do we want to have that hair or do we want to just have that be a nice calm neckline? I think a neckline that's calm would be really um, a lot better. I also love to paint a big sash or a big bow right around the neck, even on a boy. Sometimes I'll do a wreath. So we throw a wreath on there with a little bow at the bottom and that can be really fun. But you can see in this design there, it's it's fine. It's a good design, but there's plenty of room for us to tweak and change and do that. Um, but there's no shame. There's no guilt. There's no loathing. I know I've said all of this, but in case somebody just joined, I want you to know that critique is all about getting better. It is not about feeling bad. So if you are feeling bad, okay, what do we do when we feel bad on the job or when you feel bad during your practice? What do you do? Um, it's really hard. It's, it's real. It, in art, it's called the imposter syndrome. It's something that almost every artist deals with. And it's really funny because until you get to a certain level, it's like a secret. Like you think everybody else knows what they're doing and I'm the only one that doesn't know. Or like there are days where I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm not a very good face painter. Um, and it's like, okay, just yesterday you felt like you were fine and today you feel like you're not. So what happened? What happened that kind of took that away? Why did we go, you know, and it can be small things. It can be big things, but we want to just make sure that we are taking the time to give ourselves space to say, okay, whoa, where is this coming from? And try and figure it out because it's almost, oh, Hi, Catherine. Um, it's almost always coming from somewhere. It might be that a brush really isn't working, or it might be that um, your favorite paint isn't in your kit, or it's really hot and your paint's melting. And that is making you feel this negativity. But because we don't look at it, we're like, oh, just stay happy, just be happy. Um, the negative can grow. And so by naming it and by giving it a place and by saying, wow, I'm never going to forget my favorite brush again. I'm never going to do this again, or next time I'm going to change it and do it this different way. One of the things I love to make sure I do, and I've, I've probably shared this before, is I make sure I hydrate. Um, I'm not going to be dehydrated while I'm painting. If that means I take four bathroom breaks, I take four bathroom breaks. It's just not worth it. It's not worth the headache. It's not worth the eye strain. It's, it's not worth it. And so make sure that when you feel bad about your art, you know why. And maybe it really is that there's something you're really uncomfortable with. If you hate your unicorn, and it's so sad because I bet it's beautiful. But if you hate your unicorn, take the time to go out there and take your unicorn on a date. And, you know, I'm not kidding. Take a sketchbook and go to, you know, an ice cream shop and get yourself some ice cream and get your unicorn some ice cream, two scoops. And you can spend some time with your unicorn. And you can be like, you know what? We really don't get along very well. And I should take this own advice and I should do my Spider-Man better. But we can, we can really learn and we can grow by being able able to critique ourselves. But when we just feel bad, know that that's not a healthy zone. That's not a critique place. That's not where we, you know, it's like, okay, I'll take care of you later, but I'm not going to feel bad about myself because that's not worth it. There's not enough time in the day to feel bad. It doesn't take you to a good place, but it can be an indication that there's a need that you have that needs to be taken care of. So when a little kid is misbehaving, one of two things can we can do, we can meet their need or we can punish them. And so let's make sure when our emotions are misbehaving and we're feeling bad, we can meet our need or we can punish ourselves. And by the negative self-talk that I'm not a good face painter, I'll never get this right, we're punishing ourselves and we don't wanna do that. So let's meet the need. Is the need more training? Is the need new product? Is the need a better brush? Like there are a bunch of needs that we can meet. Is the need the chance to critique? Because if we just like, oh, I hate it. Oh, I hate it. I'm never doing that. No, let's give it the time and be like, why do I hate you? That's an okay question. 
It's okay to own. Now, hate is a strong word. So we'll say, why don't I like you? Why don't I like you very much? And I can tell you, I don't like Spider-Man very much because he kind of steps on my creativity. <laughs> All right. So someday I will figure out a way to do creative Spider-Man, but it hasn't happened yet. Okay. So Nicole, I'm so sorry that you feel frustrated by butterflies. We will definitely need to do, sorry, I'm moving around. Um, we definitely need to do some things on butterflies. And by the way, everybody, if you have to come and go, like that's totally fine. I'm glad you're here. Um, but this is being recorded and it will be uploaded onto YouTube. So we did do a butterfly already and I would love to get more butterfly training out there. I'm trying to make my training a lot more available. So I will keep doing YouTube videos, absolutely. But I am going to try and get some of these longer classes for people that like Nicole, you're like, I struggle with my butterflies. I want to make sure that you have access to my butterfly training and different things. So definitely let's um, do that. But okay. So dinosaurs, I love dinosaurs. Uh, okay. And oh, yay. So the Mendy video was huge. I would love, while I pull up um, a dinosaur real quick, I would love to hear from whoever's here. Um, is anybody else interested in more Mendy videos? Um, the one I did was like, okay, people kind of liked it, whatever. And then recently it's been doing really well. So if that's something that we're all learning, cause we're all stuck at home, you can see I was practicing last night. Um, I, I would be happy to make some more of those too. So let me know if we want to learn more about henna and we will do it. Okay. So there are all kinds of dinosaurs. And I know I've got an early YouTube um, video about a dinosaur design that I use all the time. Um, okay, so I'm going to just start us here real quick. Do we all recognize this design? I don't know who first came up with it. But thank you to them because we all use it and love it. So we have that dinosaur design. Now, I want to show you how I took that design and on self-critiquing um, of thinking, what do I want to do different? How do I want to learn? How do I want to grow? Um, and this is a kissy picture. I love kissy pictures. But I want to show you how I went ahead and I took that design and we changed it. Okay. So here is our little girl and boy dinosaur that have snuck away from their herds. This is a Romeo and Juliet story, right? Um, and you can see that we went ahead and what did we need to change? Well, the little feet of uh, um, Tyrannosaurus Rex uh, is, is very uh, reptile claws and stuff. And here, just use your elephant feet. That'll work great for this one. Um, and then we can add horns and like the little frill and everything to the exact same shape. This is still, I mean, we got rid of the teeth because we don't want T-Rex teeth, but this is still the same T-Rex head. I didn't have to change that much. So then we have the frill, which is super fun. And then you can see on my T-Rex, I had um, some stripes that I had just painted on. But here we just have some scales that we went ahead and stenciled on. And this is just powder right on top of the paint. And so that can be a really nice way to do it. Um, and you can see, we can decide what do we wanna do? So here we have this nice tail sticking up. We can curve the tail the other way. We can see, you know what? I don't like that eye design, or maybe I love the eye design. So as you go through and you critique, it allows you to change and adjust for what you wanna do next. We're gonna come back over to this way, try and get rid of some of that glare. Okay, so then we can also change the color. You can see how much the mood shift from the T-Rex on a little boy that was about to eat something to almost the same. The body is the same. The tail is the same. We changed the legs and we changed the hairdo, but everything else stayed the same. And what a difference, right? Okay, so we come over here and what did we do to make this guy different? We still wanted it to be a boy. So we shifted the color to a more masculine color and check out this thigh tattoo. Dinosaurs have these big, juicy thighs. They are amazing. And wouldn't a dinosaur rock a tattoo? I think, of course, they would. And so it's really fun. Just skull and crossbones, something easy, a little bit of tribal, um, not too much. You can see this isn't the most amazing foot ever, 
But by adding these little wrinkles, this is something I want to show you guys. It looks so much better. Anytime something is going to fold. So right up here at the tail is a perfect place. The tail folds up and the skin is going to wrinkle together. And so that is something that I learned by self-critiquing that I really like in my dinosaurs. I like there to be that little fold of skin on the tail because I feel like it looks so cool. And it makes it not look like I just cut this out of construction paper. That's one of the big things that I look for when I'm doing a new design is does this look like I just cut it out of paper or does it look a little bit more realistic? Are my designs realistic? Absolutely not. And that's fine. It's my style and that's all okay. But I want there to be just a little bit of realism in there. Okay, then we take a look here. So I wish I could tell you the name of this dinosaur. Um, points to anybody who can name this guy. It's... It starts with a P, I think. Anyway, but you can see we've got his nice big long thing, but I wanted, he's a punk. He needed a mohawk. So I think that was really fun. And so you want to take the time to add the little things that are going to make it fun for you. The little things that are going to make it cool for you. You can also see that I tried to chill him out just a little bit and give him a nice little rosy cheek. And that's just kind of fun. So as you spend time with your designs, and as you say, what do I want to do different next time? What do I want to change? You're going to continue to grow. If you keep everything exactly the same every single time, you will get faster. And there will still be growth, but we lose some of that magic. And I love when there is magic in my designs. So that is something that I'm always trying for. All right, so let's talk about Spider-Man. We had a couple people asking about Spider-Man. Spider-Man is like the only pop culture thing that can outpace Elsa. Elsa came along and she has just been amazing in how much we all love her. Um, but Spider-Man kind of does his thing. Okay, so I am looking for... Oh, ha, ha I'm in the animal folder. I'm like, I see spiders, but where is Spider-Man? Okay, we'll go back up here. Sorry, we're loading. Okay, so down to superheroes. We're getting closer. Spider-Man. Okay, so looking at my Spider-Mans to pick one to show you, I have so many because there are so many I do not like. <laughs> and I am always changing. Okay, so let's pick an early one so it's really easy to critique, okay? And then I'll show you a later one so that we can see where the growth came from. All right, so here we go. This is a Spider-Man. Can you tell who it is? Yes, we can. Can we see that we've got the teardrop shapes around the eyes, it's red, and it has a spider web. But I don't like it very much. So what don't I like about it? Let me take a look. I've got a big red nose. I don't really care for that big red nose. There's nothing on it. So if you end up with a part of your design that is colored, but there's nothing else, um, chances are we could adjust that. We've got some thin to thick to thin lines. We've got some line variation, but not a whole lot. And we've got this black line straight down the center of the face. And that's not very flattering. So that can also be something that we can watch for. Um, if ever we've got a black line right there. Now, if it's a skull or something and we're only doing half of the face, that's different. You can have that black line, but it's really nice to not draw a black line on the face because that's going to welcome people to be like, oh, is it symmetrical? If the, there isn't that black line, people don't look for it quite as obviously. Okay, so we do have some highlighting. The highlighting is a little hit and miss. So highlighting is supposed to show you where the light is being, where the direction's coming from. But this highlight's coming from here. These ones are coming from here. This one's coming from here. So it's almost like he's on stage and there's all these spotlights or something. Is this a fine design? Yeah, it's fine. But is there a lot we could change? Yes. And would we like it? Yeah, probably. Um, Spider-Man also looks really cool with some texture. And you can see there's no texture here. So stenciling a little bit somewhere, um, adding some shadow also looks really good. So I'm going to pull us up uh, Spider-Man we did a little bit different. So it can be really nice to add like an actual spider 
or something. Um, but let's take some of those critiques and then let's go to this Spider-Man. Here we've added that stenciling. We're gonna go in a little bit. So you can see we've got some texture. We've um, softened the teardrop to come down a little bit more. That's a shape that I find more pleasing on my Spider-Man. So it's a little bit more angled. Um, you can see we don't have the black line coming straight down on the center of the face. And we've also bowed the black line a little bit. So if you noticed on the other one, it was a straight line going from the top down to the bottom and it made for a very flat look. But here we've angled out and then in and out and then in. And what that does is it gives the illusion that this is round, which hopefully it's round in Spider-Man's head, you know? <laughs> anyway, then our highlights are on top of the black line instead of on top of the little tiny ones and they are all on the top. And so that adds a highlight to the stitching, which if you had a string and there was light on top, that there's a chance that's where it would shine. So from those um, self critiques, you can see that we've been able to develop a design that has grown. And maybe you don't like it as well as the other one, maybe you like it better and that's fine for you because you get to be the critic in your own world. Don't let anybody else come in there. Don't let the painter that painted next to you three years ago and said, you're really not very good at butterflies, are you? Don't listen to that anymore because the only person that gets to tell you what is you. And I mean that from the sweetest, sincerest part of my heart. Every little kid that says you're the most amazing face printer in the world, that's their belief. But the beliefs that will change and rule your life are your beliefs. So you get to be the person that chooses which ones you hold on to and which ones. And so you can take that little girl that says that to you and you can change it into, I am the most amazing face painter in the world to that little kid. And that is your truth. And so make sure that the things you're internalizing are things that are going to help you along your way and not things that get in your way. Okay, can you tell that criticism has gotten in my way a lot? Self-criticism? Yeah, it's something we have to fight against. So we want a fire extinguisher. We want the emergency plan. We want, because it's going to happen. We are going to face it. And we want to be able to be like, why don't I like you? Instead of, I don't like you. I don't like my painting. I'm a terrible face painter. No, why don't I like you very much? Chances are the ones you don't like will sometimes be the cutest kids that love them the most. And you're like, I don't know why you like that so much. It kind of looks bad. <laughs> Again, not good or bad, right or wrong. It just might not look like you wanted it to. All right. So here is a Spider-Man that has grown up a little bit more. Okay. Now let's go to one more um, that can give us a little bit of... Um, Creativity, give us a little bit of space. So here you can see, this is a fun Spider-Man design. We've changed it up a little bit. We've kind of tried to make it more of a spider web shape that happens to be the colors of Spider-Man that gives the eye, you know, I don't know that this woman would love to have her entire face painted. I know that I wouldn't want to be Spider-Man. Maybe that's, <laughs> maybe that's my problem. Maybe that's how I get over this as I paint it on my own face. Oh my goodness, I've never considered painting Spider-Man on my own face. Uh, this might be terrible. Okay. I don't, I don't think I want to do it, <laughs> but that's a new idea. I haven't ever thought of that before. Whew, maybe we'll get there. Okay. All right. Oh, nice. Yes. You could also paint it pink. So there again, we can't go too far before it doesn't look like Spider-Man, but you could go pink, you could go purple, but if we do green Spider-Man and instead of webbing, we do leaves, all of a sudden it's not Spider-Man anymore. So, all right. Um, we made it through my thoughts on Spider-Man. Uh, I am definitely open for, we've got time for one more design. Is there something that somebody has just been hoping for that they've been too shy to tell us? I love making shy people not be shy. Um, or I can always choose a design as well. So I'm gonna just plop around on here until somebody tells me what to do, unless I find something cool first. <laughs> oh, unicorn. Yes, unicorns are a must um, and princesses are also a must. So I'm gonna go and we're gonna find us like a unicorn Pegasus thing because there is just no way that we will ever quit painting them because even if they go out of the kid's realm of wonderful love, uh, we have worked so hard to develop them that we're going to keep drawing them 
um, and talking kids into it, even if we quit doing it. Okay, so the many faces of a unicorn. Uh, we could just talk about unicorns forever. Know that what we've said before on everything still applies to unicorns. And you are the person that gets to choose whether or not you love your unicorn. So I'm trying to find one here um, that is a good example um, that uh, so often there are lots of unicorns. Um, okay, so I'm going to show you one that I'm proud of, but that isn't my typical unicorn. And then I'm going to show you how I would shift in uh, what what could be better. So don't look at this and say, oh my gosh, she thinks that's bad. Critiquing something never means it's bad. It means that we want to keep growing. So if you want to keep growing, which I do, I want to keep growing, <laughs> then I want to look at something and I want to say, what would I change next time? So let's take a look at this unicorn and let's go through and see what would we change next time. Okay, so this unicorn is super fun. I really like how she has a toupee, which <laughs> is so funny. Um, when I paint too many things in a day, I end up making them a little bit extreme towards the end. I have no idea where this fell in the day, but it was probably towards the end. Okay, so what are we looking at here? We've got, let's start with shape. We've got wings that are pushing mask. They aren't really butterflies anymore. Um, they're a little too wide. There isn't the V cut out. Um, if it goes down straight, I think of it as a mask. If it cuts out, then I think of it as wings. So this is kind of masky. Um, we've got the rainbow on the wings, and then we don't have it in the hair. That's a secret that I do when somebody says a rainbow unicorn. They get a rainbow, but it is not the unicorn. I hate messing. Like zebras, yeah, I'll throw a rainbow mane on a zebra because I don't have to do as much work um, with the swooping of the hair. But I don't like the way that rainbows, when you try and make them move all fancy and then do line work on top, it, it makes me upset. So I don't do that. Um, but you can see that the inner color of the rainbow is blue. So we are using the color blue towards the outside on either side. And so her hair floats right down into there. Um, so that's moving on from shape to color. So that's what the color is doing. Um, but let's, um, and then the mood, this unicorn has some mood going on. She has not a fully open eye. She definitely has the eyelid that's cutting off the eye and she's kind of looking up and back, which is a little bit more unique. Usually we kind of focus on looking forward or straight ahead. We don't look up and back as often. So there are some differences about this unicorn. Let's take a look at what I would do different next time. So to critique this, as I look at it, um, there is only black on the unicorn. And this is something that I often do when I'm going fast, but I like there to be um, harmony in a design. So if I've done black, even if it's only eyeliner, I like there to be black somewhere else, or I like there to be a place on the unicorn that doesn't have black. So if we went and we did white for her hair outlines instead of the black, then that wouldn't bother me that the black is on the unicorn and not on the mask. I don't really want to go through and add a bunch of shadow to the mask because I love how bright that is. But that is just something that I notice about this design is that it looks like we had a beautiful mask and then we came and we stuck a little sticker on the front. And so maybe not. Okay, as we look at what else is going on, we have blue and purple on the unicorn and then we have the rainbow over here. And once I have a rainbow, I like to try and catch both ends in the design. So we've got purple and we've got blue. I think that the design would be elevated a little bit were we to have a pink little flower. So the rainbow is cut into two halves. We have the warm half and we have the cool half, which is actually my nails this week, which is kind of funny. So cool half on one hand, warm half on the other. Um, but if we could pull a little bit of the warm rainbow into the unicorn part, that would be amazing. The easiest way to do that is throw some gold on the horn. If that horn was golden, Oh my gosh, that would just liven up the whole design because so much of the line work is white, the horn is kind of getting lost. It's not quite as special. And really what makes a unicorn special is that horn. Okay, so we've looked at the color and we've looked at the mood. I think the mood here is really fun. Um, I 
do love when there is a focal point and then there's a supporting cast. And this doesn't have a supporting cast. This is a unicorn and then a background. And so I feel like we're missing that medium piece, that middle piece. That piece can be more about the unicorn. So we could add jewelry. We could add that little flower there or a little bow there. Or you could add a little ladybug. Give it a little friend. Um, I'm such a fan of friends. I love there to be little extra special things, or it could even be a shape. If we wanted to add a heart or a star, or we wanted to add, a, have you seen the unicorns? I know Ronnie Mena does this a lot, um, but it's a unicorn and then it has line work, but then it has these perfect stars. You know, sometimes even just that extra little shape can really bring about more balance to a design. And I feel like this design, as much as I love it, could use a little bit of that balancing influence. Okay, let's take a look at the line work. So as we go around the outside, we've got all of these beautiful, thick, and then they taper off lines. And that's great. But we don't have any real delicate touches. And we don't have any real um, stability shapes. And so it turns it into a little bit of a one note. And so often what I do and what I love to do is I love to have little feathery bits. And so it can be a little whoosh at the end, or it can be a few little dots or the sprinkling. You get it more in her mane. There's definitely some movement and some flow in that mane, but there isn't um, quite as much of a connection between the detail intricateness of this piece and then the the more solid stable of every everything else and so the design doesn't flow for me like I would want it to one of the places I love to change that is right here you can see we've got a lot of spots open I love adding a little French curl so you just see this little tiny curl just right there from behind the ear and add it in um, just the blue. It's it's the hair, but that would add just this little bit um, to that empty space as well. So there's another one um, that I would do. Hey, it's good to see you. I'm so glad you're here. Hi from New Zealand. Okay, so I'm going to just catch up for a quick second. Make sure. Uh... Awesome. Okay, Melissa, I'm so glad you agree with the empoweringness and um, Thank you, Jessica, for what you had to say. Hello back to you. Um, anyway, okay. So as you can see, we have all of this opportunity to learn and to grow from being willing to be critiqued. Now, let's talk for just a second because I said over and over and over, and I totally believe it, that self-critique is the most important. And I believe that. Absolutely. But where is there room to critique others? Or where is there room to, oh, Shauna, thank you. Shauna, you just, thank you. That was so sweet of Shauna. Okay, sorry, <laughs> I'm back. Okay, so where is that room? Well, I'll tell you what. As we look through our social medias and we are scrolling like we do and we see something that we like, especially on Instagram, and we save it. And we're like, oh, save that, save that, save that for all the things we really like take a chance or not a chance, but take the time to say, hold on a second. I don't like this. Why don't I like this? And learn about what we don't like, because that's so empowering. If we go out, uh, so we're going out to eat. Okay. We're all going to go out to, to get dinner together. I totally wish that that was actually what was happening right now. And we are saying, okay, where do you want to eat? Well, there are always people that are like, oh, let's go here. I love this. But then it's also important to be like, oh, let's not go there. I don't like this. It is so important that we understand what we don't like. So as we're looking at our own work or we're looking at somebody else's work, that is instructive for us to know, I don't like that. I'll tell you what, I don't love the color orange. It's coming around to me more once I rebranded from Jacana Parties to Fairy Fox Design. Now foxes are there and orange is a big thing. Um, anyway, and so... Orange has kind of come around, but as we learn, what is it that I don't like? We can sometimes understand, maybe this is why I don't like it, or maybe we can twist it around into another way and be like, you know what? Um, I don't like this color combination, but if I add this third color, everything comes together. And you're like, ah, oh, it was always missing that. I don't love green and purple together. Oh, it's not my favorite. You throw blue in the mix and all of a sudden I'm sold. I'm like, yes, peacocks. There we go. But when it's just green and purple together, I get this eerie, like, oh, it's kind of like off Halloween zombie. <laughs> like I don't, I don't love that combination. So 
It is amazing as we are scanning through our social medias to also look at the pictures that don't grab our eye and to say, why doesn't this grab me? I totally just scrolled past, go back, do this at least once this week and be like, okay, this doesn't grab me at all. Why doesn't this grab me? And we can learn. I am not drawn to things that are really heavy with black lining, or I am really drawn to think, you know, and, and get to know ourselves better. Then, and only then, ooh, this is the hard one, but I'm going to invite you all to it. Um, I do have a group on Facebook called Learning with Laura. You're welcome to request to join. And um, it's a safe place where you can put work up and you can say, okay, I would like critiques. Now, just saying critique me. I mean, that's okay. Sure. And maybe some people say, but you can say, okay, I'm really trying hard to make my hair look more realistic when I'm painting a princess. Here's a princess and here's the hair I painted. Can you help me see what you see when you look at my princess hair. If you find other painters, other artists, even kids, kids can tell you whether or not they like something. You can draw something and show it to a kid and say, okay, um, do you like this or do you not like this? Or how could I make this better? How could I make this better? If you open your heart and you remember their opinion is theirs, take it or leave it. What they say does not have to be something that you need to earn, you know, and to take with you. No, no, no. But if you open yourself, people can tell you such amazing things that you won't see on your own. And so absolutely um, reach out to other people, do it not alone, be able to say, I want to be better. How can I grow? And let those around you that you trust tell you what they think, because some of what they say will be worth listening to. But I hope you guys love yourselves. Absolutely. Thank you so much for coming to the class on critiquing and face painting, because I think it's a really important thing to be brave and strong. Um, I don't know how many of you had chocolate uh, nearby, because this is intense stuff. Um, anyway, but I absolutely love that you guys were here. I love face painting, and I love sharing that love with you. Um, absolutely. I hope to see you guys again soon. If anybody has a question, I probably have just a couple more minutes. Woo, sorry. Uh, feel free to text anything into the um, chat box and I can answer any questions if we have some burning questions. Um, but, oh, thanks for the hearts. I love when you guys send hearts. That's so kind. Okay. But again, hi, everyone. I know there have been a lot of us that have come and go. I know. It's so sad. But Allie. Okay. So... <laughs> You did come to the end. This has been recorded and it will show up on YouTube probably tomorrow. So you can watch the whole hour of listening to me rant and rave about how important it is to critique. <laughs> okay, awesome. Well, I hope you guys have a wonderful night. And again, thank you so much for coming. I am going to see, um, am I doing events now? Okay, that's a great question. Um, everywhere, okay, the virus is the worst where I'm at that it has been since the whole thing started. <laughs> And so it's hard. Um, I will do a private event where the family is making the decision to have a face painter. Um, that is a choice that I feel like is a really important choice. I don't want it to be something that is spur of the moment. So I won't go set up and face paint in public because then I'm going from kid to kid to kid to families and I'm not comfortable and I don't want to do that. But um, I don't want face painting to be gone forever. And if a family is getting together and the kids are all sharing straws, I don't know that face painting is going to make that much of a difference. I wear a mask and I'll also sometimes wear a face shield. I've also worn gloves. That's taking it a little far, but I try and wash my hands in between kids and have rubbing alcohol to dip my brushes in. So yes, I am painting. It isn't very much. Um, I do teach a class uh, every Friday. So tomorrow um, I do a two hour class that's on Zoom um, that all of that information is going to be coming more available. But that actually has been huge for me because it makes sure that I am painting my best work once a week. And um, whether you're doing that in practice or whether, um, okay, I'll tell you all about that, uh, how to attend. Um, anyway, so I think it's really important that you keep painting, even if you're not actually out at events. Um, balloons 
are a lot less uncomfortable because you're not skin to skin contacting and nobody is giving you stuff unless they're tipping you, which is nice. And so this last weekend I did some balloon twisting at a grocery store, um, just as a place where there are people <laughs> because they're an essential business. Um, anyway, so there are ways to still be out, um, that I am feeling comfortable, but, uh, that's the answer to your question. Okay. So how to attend, uh, my class every Friday. Okay. Um, there are always little tweaks and shifts. We do it in the afternoon, um, but it is also recorded. And then there is a, a link that's put on YouTube, but it's a private link. And so I have a group it's called, uh, well, it's not even, there's not really a name. It's, it's being a member of fairy Fox design. So if you're interested in attending that two hour class, um, if you go to buy me a coffee and I I'll add the link down into the bottom, but buymeacoffee.com, um, you can subscribe to a membership, um, with Thanksgiving coming and black Friday. I'm going to do a black Friday sale where, um, I'll have a big discount on the annual membership. Um, but it's $20 a month. And so for $20, you get to come to four or five, depending on how the month falls to our classes. Um, and then if you can't come during the actual window, it is recorded and I am available. And so if ever you have a question, you just, you can message me or whatever, but there's a group of us. Um, and it's really fun to just have friends that we get together and we actually do a paint along. We usually do four or five designs a week. Um, and there's just a new topic every week. So it isn't just face painting week after week after week. Um, this last week, uh, and I'm going to get it wrong because we've done so many. Um, but the other awesome thing is that when you subscribe, um, you also get access to all of the classes that you've missed, missed, <laughs> that have already happened um, with an annual membership. And so that's really nice um, to be able to watch whatever you want. But so we've done Pretty in Pink and Flowers and um, Boy Designs and we did lettering once. We're going to be doing some henna. Anyway, so that's really awesome and really it's just nice to spend the time with other face painters in a kind of live setting. So this class tonight was very similar to what we do um, at that class. We usually do about half an hour of talking about the topic and then the other hour and a half is actually painting four or five designs um, that use what we've just learned and we've done some really special things so if you hate subscriptions i totally understand i definitely um subscribe to things and then i'm like oh actually no um and so with that um black friday whatever up on etsy i'm gonna make sure that all of the classes that we have done will be available for purchase one class at a time so we've got a great one on line work i've got a great one on creating your own designs um that's a two-hour class and they'll be ten dollars so um if you want to take just a class here and there that's also um, available and that will be coming out again in just a couple of weeks. So thank you guys for being here and um, a video on blending. I love that suggestion. Yes. Let's definitely talk about blending. Um, I think what we will probably call that is color control because <laughs> I feel like it is so hard to control color when it's mixing with water and it's running everywhere. So let's definitely do that. Um, and then hopefully we'll do another live soon. Um, so I'm, I'm going to have to say good night. I'm so sad, but thank you everybody for coming. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend and um, thank you for spending this time with me. Uh, take care. Bye everybody. I'm going to just see if, oh, I can. Um, we're gonna just grab one thing here before we're done. Uh, the screen ends up disappearing and I hate it because it's like I wanted to remember what that was all about. Okay, awesome. Well, I got that. I hope you guys have a great night and I will talk to you later and I'll try and give you more heads up on the next live so that um, you can know when it's gonna happen. But take care everybody, bye.